My name is Caroline, and I'm 30 years old. My husband, Michael, is currently at war, and I'm left alone in our apartment in Chicago. Living without him has turned out to be much harder than I expected. We've always been a strong couple, supporting each other, but life has changed. Now I have to face it all on my own. My adopted younger brother, Zach, who is 24, recently moved in with me for his internship in the city. We haven't been very close over the years, but I was glad he was coming. However, things didn't turn out as simple as I thought they would. When Michael went to war, I thought I could handle the loneliness. We knew he would be called up, and we were ready for the separation, or at least I thought I was. The first few weeks, I kept myself busy with work and daily tasks, but as time passed and Michael's letters became less frequent, I started to truly feel how alone I had become. Life without him felt strange. Our apartment, once filled with laughter and conversation, now seemed vast and empty. Even the sounds of the city outside the window offered no comfort. I felt abandoned in this world, as if he had taken with him the part of my life that felt real. Evenings became painfully long, and I found myself sitting in silence more often, staring into nothingness. When Zach offered to stay with me during his internship, I welcomed the idea. We hadn't been particularly close since he became my adopted brother, but I remembered him as a quiet and shy boy. Perhaps his presence would help ease my loneliness. But when he arrived, I was stunned. Zach had changed. Instead of the reserved boy I remembered, he was now a confident and striking young man. The way he carried himself, his gaze, it all made me feel uneasy in his presence. I wasn't supposed to think this way, but I found myself looking at him more as a man than as my brother. These thoughts disturbed me. I couldn't understand why my mind was suddenly filled with these strange feelings. I tried to convince myself that it was just the result of my loneliness, but with each passing day, the fog in my soul thickened. The loneliness and emotional emptiness I felt without Michael began to be replaced with something entirely different, and it scared me. It became especially hard to stay composed when Zack would come out of the shower wrapped in nothing but a towel. Every time I saw his wet hair and the drops of water sliding down his body, my breath caught in my throat. Or when he cooked breakfast in the kitchen wearing only his boxers, I tried not to stare, but my thoughts constantly returned to how much he had grown into a man. Summer in Chicago was in full swing. The air felt heavy, and the humidity offered no release. One day, Zach mentioned that the air conditioner in his room had stopped working. I tried to find a repairman, but everyone was busy, so I offered for him to sleep in my room, where the air conditioner was still working. Zach hesitated for a moment but then agreed. After all, what was the harm? We were family. However, when he came into my bedroom that first night, the situation was far more awkward than I had expected. I was already in bed, wearing my sheer nightgown, when Zach entered. He couldn't help but notice my figure beneath the thin fabric. His gaze lingered longer than usual, and I could feel the tension in the room thickening. My heart started beating faster, and my throat went dry. I wanted to say something to break the tension, but the words just wouldn't come. Zach sat on the edge of the bed, and I tried to steer the conversation towards something neutral, but every glance, every movement from him made me feel like there was something more between us than just a sibling bond. I kept reminding myself that we shouldn't feel this way, but with each passing minute, it became harder to convince myself. Our conversations were becoming more open with each passing day. We talked about things we had never discussed before, our fears, disappointments, desires. Sometimes we would talk late into the night, and I noticed the way he looked at me. That look. It was different, not the way a brother should look at his sister. I tried to hide my feelings, but it was becoming more difficult every day. His presence, the way he moved, the way he touched, even the smallest things, all of it stirred something in me. I noticed that even the simplest moments, like a smile or a casual touch, sent waves of emotion through me. The pull between us grew stronger, but neither of us dared to make the first move. Each evening we spent together in the same room only increased the tension between us. Our late-night conversations would stretch into hours, neither Zach nor I wanting to fall asleep. The silence that followed when we ran out of topics to talk about was so thick it felt like I could cut it with a knife. 
I could feel the tension filling the space between us. I knew we were approaching a dangerous line, but I couldn't stop. Sometimes Zack would just look at me with an expression I couldn't interpret as brotherly. I felt waves of emotions rising inside me, ones I tried to suppress. I kept reminding myself that this was wrong, that I had to keep my distance, but every day it became harder. Then, one night, when the heat was particularly oppressive, something shifted. We were both lying there in the darkness, and I could hear Zack's breathing, fast and uneven. My heart pounded in my chest, and I couldn't relax, my thoughts spinning around his proximity. It felt inevitable. I turned toward him, our eyes meeting in the dim light, and without words, without discussion, our faces slowly began to move closer. I don't remember who made the first move. It was a moment filled with passion and repressed emotions. Our lips met, and everything inside me flipped. This wasn't just a kiss, it was the release of all the feelings we had been trying so hard to hide. It was gentle, but at the same time, full of desire. When the kiss ended, I quickly pulled away. The realization of what we had just done hit me with a weight I couldn't bear. I had crossed a line I promised myself I would never cross. I wanted to say something, to apologize, but the words were stuck in my throat. A wave of guilt washed over me. How could I have allowed this? But despite the guilt, I knew my feelings for Zack had only grown stronger. That kiss confirmed everything I had been denying for so long. When the tension between us reached its peak, everything that happened felt inevitable. Zack was so close, and I could feel his warmth, his breath. Every touch, even the lightest, sent waves of emotions through me that I could no longer hide from. I turned toward him without saying a word. Our eyes met, and in that moment, everything became clear. Zack slowly raised his hand, his fingers gently brushing against my skin. That touch, so light at first, almost imperceptible, stirred feelings within me that I had been trying to suppress. His hand slowly moved down my back, and I felt my breath catch. His fingers lingered, as if he too was trying to understand what was happening. The moment was filled with tenderness, yet so much anticipation. Zack, as if gathering courage, drew closer, and the space between us disappeared. I could feel his touch, his warmth, his gentle movements, careful, as if he was afraid of breaking the delicate balance between us. But the moment our bodies finally pressed together, everything else seemed to fade away. His arms wrapped around me, and I let myself be near him, forgetting for a moment everything that was happening in my mind. The whole world seemed to stop, leaving just the two of us in that room. I could feel every breath he took, every movement, and my own emotions overwhelmed me. All the restraint, all the rules we had tried to follow, crumbled under the weight of this moment. When it was over, I lay beside him, my heart beating so loudly it felt like he could hear it too. The silence in the room was deafening, yet it felt like so much had been said without a single word. I knew that this moment had changed both of us. Zack was the first to break the silence. He looked at me with a hint of uncertainty and said, you are my first. I froze for a moment, trying to process his words. I, I didn't know, I whispered, feeling a mix of embarrassment and unexpected realization rising in my chest. He smiled at me, but his eyes were filled with seriousness. And I don't regret it, he added. I tried to lighten the mood with a joke, saying, well, I guess that makes me your teacher now. Older sisters are supposed to teach their younger brothers. But the joke didn't ease the tension I felt inside. I knew that something far deeper had happened between us, and it unsettled me. Michael's return was unexpected. I received a message from his commander saying that he would be coming home earlier than planned due to a serious injury. As I read those words, my stomach twisted. The memories of my relationship with Zack, of the line we had crossed, flooded back with full force, and I felt guilt wrapping tighter around me. When Michael finally arrived home, I barely recognized him. His face was gaunt, his shoulder bandaged, and he looked exhausted and worn. His eyes, which once shone with confidence, now seemed dimmed. I rushed to him, pretending to be overjoyed at his return, but my heart was heavy with guilt. How are you? I asked, trying to mask the inner turmoil that roiled within me. I knew he deserved my care and support, 
But the thought of Zack and what we had done nodded my conscience. Oh, managing, Michael replied, nodding toward his bandaged shoulder, but I'll need some help. His words were simple, but I could hear the vulnerability in his voice, something I hadn't seen in him before. He needed me now more than ever, and that only made my feelings more complicated. Zack still lived with us. Now, with Michael home, the tension in the house became unbearable. Every time Zack entered the room, I found myself avoiding his gaze, trying not to think about what had happened between us. But I could see that Michael suspected nothing. He was so focused on his recovery that he didn't notice the turmoil brewing inside me. Every evening, I helped Michael change, tending to his injured shoulder, and each touch reminded me of my betrayal. I felt like a traitor, now forced to care for the man I had wronged, and the weight of it crushed me. I wanted to scream, to tell him the truth, but I was terrified of breaking him even further. Zack, on the other hand, remained silent. He was still around, but his presence had become an unbearable reminder of what I had done. Every time I caught his eye, the guilt inside me deepened. We both knew the situation had spiraled out of control, but neither of us dared to make a move. I knew that sooner or later, everything would come to light. It was getting harder to hide the truth from Michael, and the tension in the house grew with each passing day. I tried to stay by Michael's side, helping him recover, but the guilt inside me not away. I constantly feared that something small would reveal everything about Zack and me. But I never expected it to happen so suddenly. One evening, Michael decided to spend some time in our bedroom, trying to rest. I didn't think much of it until I heard him shout my name, his voice filled with anger and pain. When I entered the room, I saw Michael standing by the bed, his face twisted in fury. In his hand was a box of contraceptives. I froze, realizing that everything had spiraled out of control. What is this, he growled, his voice thick with rage. He waved the box in the air, then bent down and pulled out Zack's underwear from beneath the bed. The room fell deathly silent. It felt as though the air itself had frozen. My heart stopped, and I felt the world collapsing around me. I couldn't find the words. All I could do was stand there and watch his fury and betrayal flashed in Michael's eyes. In that moment, I knew he had pieced everything together. His gaze darted to the door, and just then, Zack walked into the room. Is this yours? Michael hissed, holding the underwear in one hand and the box in the other. Zack remained silent, his face pale, knowing there was nowhere left to hide. Before I could say anything, Michael lunged at Zack. Their fight was brutal, driven by the fury that had been building up inside Michael. He attacked, forgetting about his injured shoulder, striking with a force that seemed to carry all the pain he was feeling. Zack tried to defend himself but didn't fight back, knowing that hurting Michael would only make things worse. I screamed, begging them to stop, but they were both consumed by their anger. At one point, Michael, in a blind rage, threw another punch and re-injured his shoulder. He let out a cry of pain, but his anger still drove him forward. Finally, I threw myself between them, desperate to end the nightmare. Zack was the first to step back. He realized that the fight had only made things worse, that it had destroyed everything. Without saying a word, he left the room and then the house. In his eyes, I saw the pain, the guilt, and the understanding that there was no going back. I was left alone with Michael, who was hunched over in pain, looking at me with hatred and betrayal. In that moment, I knew that everything we had built had been shattered. It had been a few weeks since Zack left our home after that terrible fight with Michael. Our lives were shattered. Michael barely spoke to me, his anger and disappointment palpable. He was still recovering from his injury, and I was helping him, but every time our eyes met, all I could see was the pain. One morning, I felt an unusual dizziness and weakness. I thought it was just stress, after all, too much had happened recently, but when the symptoms didn't go away and only got worse, I began to worry. I went to the pharmacy and bought a pregnancy test, not fully realizing why I was doing it. When the two lines appeared on the test, my world came crashing down. I couldn't believe what was happening. My heart pounded so loudly it felt like it echoed in the room. It was a shock, I was pregnant. 
but the most devastating part was knowing whose child it was. It was Zack's child. My mind swirled with fear and despair. I couldn't keep this baby. Its very existence would be a constant reminder of everything I had done wrong, of all the pain I had caused Michael. How could I continue living with that lie? Every time I looked at the child, I wouldn't just see an innocent being, I would see the symbol of my betrayal. Those days were the most agonizing of my life. I didn't know what to do. Abortion seemed like the only option, but even making that decision felt like a weight crushing my chest. I thought long and hard, trying to find another way, but I couldn't. This baby couldn't come into the world. I couldn't live with it. I made an appointment at the clinic. When the day came, I was in such an emotional fog that I barely remember how I ended up in the doctor's office. Everything felt distant, as if it were happening to someone else. I heard the doctor's voices, their instructions, but all I felt inside was emptiness. When it was over, I sat in silence, realizing that I had returned to my desolate reality. On the surface, it seemed like the right decision. I did it for my family, for my life, but inside, I felt like I had lost a part of myself. This pregnancy could have destroyed everything I had left, and I couldn't allow that. But the abortion didn't bring me peace. I felt like I had lost control over my life, and now I was left in a void, with no way forward, no way back. After the abortion, I felt hollow, as if there was nothing left inside me. I had made the only decision that seemed right, but the guilt consumed me entirely. I realized that everything that had happened over the past few months had not only destroyed my life but the lives of those around me. Michael and I continued living together, but only because I had nowhere else to go. I stayed in this marriage not out of love or attachment but because I saw no other way. Michael knew this, he could feel it, and this reality pushed us even further apart. Every day, I woke up feeling trapped, with no escape. Our marriage had long been broken, yet we remained under the same roof like two strangers. I tried to continue living as if nothing had changed, but everything was different. I felt trapped in my own world of pain and regret. Michael, though he tried to be there for me, had become a stranger. We spoke less and less, and even when I looked at him, I saw the reflection of the pain I had caused him. Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night from anxious dreams, thinking about what had happened. I thought about Zack, about how we had destroyed our family. I was ashamed, even in front of myself. My choices had led to the point where I couldn't even look Michael in the eye anymore. Every movement he made, every word he spoke, was a reminder of what I had done. I tried to repair our relationship, to be there for him, to help him in his recovery, but the harder I tried, the more I felt the gap between us growing wider. I could no longer hide my guilt and my feelings. Michael tried to act as usual, but I knew he sensed the changes in me. He saw how different I had become, but he couldn't understand the depth of my pain. One evening, as we sat together at the dinner table, barely speaking, Michael suddenly looked up, his eyes serious. You're not the same as you were before, he said quietly, his voice filled with tension. I don't know what's happened to you, but I can feel that something between us is broken. I couldn't respond. His words pierced through me because I knew he was right. Something had indeed broken, and I could no longer fix it. My guilt had become so overwhelming that I couldn't keep hiding my inner turmoil, but telling him the truth would mean breaking everything apart for good. I knew I couldn't keep living like this. My relationship with Michael had been destroyed to the point where the lie I was living was consuming me. I could no longer look him in the eye, hiding what had happened. We lived in the same apartment, but we were further apart than we had ever been. And though I feared the consequences, I knew it was time to tell him the truth. One evening, I gathered all the courage I had. We were sitting at dinner, and I realized I couldn't delay it any longer. My hands trembled, and my heart pounded in my chest. I looked up and spoke softly. Michael, we need to talk. He looked at me with a hint of confusion, but there was something in his eyes that told me he had been expecting this moment for a while. What is it? he asked, his voice steady, but there was already an edge of worry. I took a deep breath and began speaking, barely able to hold back my tears. 
I have to tell you the truth about what happened. About the baby. I saw the shock and disbelief flicker across his face. Baby, he repeated, as if the word was foreign and unfamiliar. Yes. I was pregnant, I continued, clutching my hands in my lap, trying not to break down. And the baby wasn't yours. His face twisted as if I had dealt him the deepest blow. He stared at me, trying to comprehend what he had just heard. It was Zach's, I barely managed to say, and the silence that followed felt unbearable. I had an abortion because I knew I couldn't keep that baby. I couldn't live with it. Michael slowly rose from his chair, his eyes filled with rage and pain, as if he was battling an inner storm. You're telling me that the baby was your brother's, he shouted, his voice echoing through the room. I nodded, unable to say anything more. I had expected his anger, but hearing it out loud made me realize the full weight of my actions. Michael stood there, his breathing heavy, and I saw his fist clench. How could you? How could you do this, he yelled, his voice full of pain, betrayal, and fury. You've destroyed us. Our family. Everything. He turned to me sharply, his eyes blazing with anger. I can't live like this anymore. I can't trust you. We need a divorce. Those words cut through me like a knife. I knew it was inevitable, but hearing it still felt unbearable. I tried to say something, to explain, but the words disappeared. All I felt was emptiness. Despite all the pain and fear, I suddenly felt a strange sense of relief. Everything was out in the open now, and I was no longer living a lie. I couldn't undo what I had done, but there was no more hiding behind the walls of secrecy. Michael walked out of the room, leaving me alone in the silence. Everything was shattered, but at least now I was being honest with him and with myself. After Michael filed for divorce, my life changed forever. I was left alone in the apartment, where every corner reminded me of what I had lost. No one could help me cope with this pain, neither Michael, who was now gone from my life, nor Zach, whom I hadn't seen since he left. I had lost them both, and with that came the realization that my life had been shattered. The days after the divorce were some of the hardest. Each morning I woke up with a sense of emptiness, and each night I went to bed knowing I couldn't go back to the past. My mistakes had brought me here, and now I had to live with their consequences. I didn't know where to begin. I had to start my life from scratch, but an inner voice kept reminding me of what I had lost, the family I had destroyed, the love I had betrayed. I searched for peace, but instead, I found only bitterness and regret. Sometimes it felt like this weight would always hang on my shoulders, holding me back from moving forward. But gradually, I began to understand that life goes on, even when it feels like everything has fallen apart. I started to search for ways to heal. I spent a lot of time reflecting on my mistakes, on how I had allowed my desires to destroy everything I held dear. I tried to learn how to forgive myself, though it was harder than I ever imagined. Each step was difficult, but I knew I had to keep moving. My days were now filled with small victories, a simple walk through the city, the attempt to find new hobbies, even the thought of starting therapy. In these small steps, I began to see a hint of hope, that perhaps, one day, I could find peace, and perhaps, one day, I could start to forgive myself. But the answer to the bigger question, whether I could rebuild my life and find meaning, remained open. I didn't know what lay ahead. Could I find a path to forgiveness? Could I regain control of my life? Or would the past taunt me forever? Those questions remain unanswered, but one thing I knew for sure, life went on, and I had a chance to start over with a blank slate.